Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Likes, comments, and subscribes are always appreciated. Uh, uh, welcome back to another news I missed. There we go. Welcome back to another news I missed, where I go over news I missed. And without further ado, I just had some sugar, so if it sounds a little bit crazy, that's why. I went and got some cookies, but the cookies were like gigantic, and I'm like feeling the effects of the cookies. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Charles Hoskinson has assured users that the Vasil hard fork is in the final stages of testing input output. Global founder Charles Hoskinson has assured users in a video on Tuesday addressing the progress of the Vasil hard fork upgrade that he does not expect any further delays. Asserting that the upgrade is in its final stages of uh, testing, he said, The good news is that the set of things that could go wrong have gotten so small, and now we're kind of in the final stages of testing in that respect. So unless anything new is discovered, I don't anticipate that we'll have any further delays. For those of you who missed that a couple of days ago, it made crypto headline news that at the end of July, we did not have the much anticipated Cardano Vasil hardware upgrade fork, whatever the actual upgrade is. I told everyone I had a very strange feeling that they were waiting for September. Why September? Because it's when Ethereum is going to have their upgrade. And I simply assumed they would want to ride the wave upward, whether that's true or not. No one knows, except for the people who are actually working on the project. But uh, the sentiment around Cardano began to sour quite rapidly. I told you all before, we are in a, a, a different ball game now when it comes to the cryptocurrency space. Many years ago, everyone kept on saying, oh, we're going to upgrade. Oh, we got to wait three more months, nine more months, six more months. There's an upgrade. Oh, now we're going to have another upgrade. You got to wait three more months, six more months, nine more months. There's your upgrade. But uh, we've gotten to the point where I told you all of this before as well. If we did not have that Ethereum upgrade at least scheduled for this year, I think people would have run to other blockchains, and I think the people behind these systems now know that. Like, there's there's no longer a, you know, something's going to happen, but you know, <laughs> let's just wait 99 more months to see where this actually ends up taking us. It is worth noting that the Crypto Basic, oh, okay, that's the website, reported on Friday that developers have further delayed the long-anticipated upgrade Previously expected at the, I think it was January, and then it was May, no, no, it was March, and then it was May, and then it was the end of July. Four additional weeks. The major reason developers gave was that more extensive testing is needed before the upgrade can go live on the mainnet. In the video released by Hoskinson on Monday, I think he does like a, an, an almost daily ask me anything kind of thing on his channel. The IOG founder clarified that in the testing of the final node needed for the upgrade, node 1.35.0, developers found three separate bugs. According to Hoskinson, these bugs led to the creation of three different software versions, with 1.35.3 looking like the one that would have made it to the hard fork. However, Hoskinson noted a need for extensive testing after highlighting that the Vasil fork is Cardano's most complex upgrade yet, I'm sure. So yeah, the news is, according to this guy, there won't be any more delays when it comes to the upgrade. I am certain at this point. If it's not the very end of this month, it is going to be extremely close to the Ethereum upgrade. I wish that they would just kind of just say that they're waiting for the market to kind of pick back up to be able to do it because it's happened before with many other projects where a lot of times people keep pretending like, oh no, one more week. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, the market's going back up. Our upgrade is here, guys. Look at how amazing this all is. For clarification, for those of you who do not know, I hold uh, Ada Cardano, have been for a while. I bought many moons ago. And I am slightly optimistic on the project. I won't lie to you. Sometimes I sit there and I'm like, okay, you guys got to do a little bit more. But as far as we know, and the, around the, the general hyper optimism around this project from people who are uh, true believers, uh, we hit $3. Was it 3 dollars was it 3 $3.30? $3.60? I don't remember its previous all-time high. Regardless of what it was, I'm still expecting a, a 4 or $5 Cardano at some point. 
So that's the, these are the numbers that I'm looking out for. That's the Charles Hoskinson said there will be no more delays. They found some bugs. They worked the bugs out. And at some point we will have the Vasil hard fork upgrade on Cardano news. And yeah, let's move on. Mm, next up. The Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation, or SMBC, the second largest of the three biggest banks in Japan, has announced it is planning to expand into digital asset businesses, including NFTs and Web3 platforms. What? That's so shocking. I can't believe it because everyone else is doing the exact same thing. The company will partner with Hashport, a group that offers tokenization and listing services in Japan to launch a token business lab to experiment with these new technologies. Many traditional banking companies around the world are now considering entering. No, they're not considering it. All these banks have been into crypto for a very long time. This is no longer a consideration. Should we enter? The no, 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 no. They've they've been here for. A I'm talking very fast. They've been here for a while. Remember, we had news. All the way back in the long, long ago when the world was still partially normal in 2019, that a lot of these banks and a lot of these institutions and hedge funds had been in the cryptocurrency space since 2014. It's, it's now that they are publicly saying these things out loud in press conferences, as opposed to being like, oh no, crypto, we will never buy that while they're buying it behind the scenes. SMBC. The Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation, an institution with more than 463 branches and a presence all over the world, has announced it is going to enter the cryptocurrency asset business, taking NFT services and Web3 as its main priority in the field. Wonderful. Not really much more to even dig in there. Of course, there's more to the article, but it's always the exact same thing over and over. We've been looking at the space for a week and a half. We would like to get into it because we totally do not own any other Web3 projects. Ethereum? What is that? I have never heard of it, but we should, as a bank, start buying some. It's, all, it's always the same. It's, 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 it's all, every single gosh darn time, it's always the same exact story. I, told you, I, I, I used to have it in my titles of the videos. Banks are obsessed with cryptocurrencies, especially when they realize that they can't give you any actual return rate on something anymore. Now, it's just an algorithm that does it automatically that they don't even have to control. They can simply charge you for still having an account with them. And that's how they make their money as they're giving you the same exact service that you could be getting for free. Because people, for some reason, still haven't realized that in 2022, we can be our own banks now. But as far as it comes to adoption, this is wonderful. Cool, awesome. We get banking news all the time that this bank is adding that, that bank has added this, and this bank is thinking about doing that. Now we're getting into the like, does a bank need to jump into the NFT space? Probably not. I assume it also has to do something with uh, maybe an accumulation of. If you remember in 2021, we had news that allegedly, apparently, there were a number of hedge funds who had started to buy uh, NFTs in mass. Who those hedge funds are, we don't know. We always get that like uh, individual inside of a dark parking lot wearing like a you know a trench coat uh, kind of news in the cryptocurrency space. But if you've been following a couple of platforms, it does kind of make a lot of sense, especially with how scarce a lot of these things are. So anyway, that's the SMBC Bank is looking to get into NFTs and Web3 platforms because you know the future and all that you know technology. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, Colombia's government has launched a partnership with Ripple Labs, the company behind XRP, to put land titles on the blockchain, part of a plan to rectify land distribution efforts. So unfair, they've led to... Oh, I get it. It's a whole sentence. Part of a plan to rectify land distribution efforts so unfair that they've led to decades of conflict. Uh, once again, uh, Colombia's government has partnered with Ripple. I'm gonna repeat that one more time because I'm pretty sure that's the first time that many people are hearing that. And this is this is another one of those uh, you know instances where crazy things keep happening in the cryptocurrency space, but it does nothing to the prices. The project, built by blockchain development company Peersist Technology, that is P-E-E-R-S-Y-S-T, and Ripple, <coughs> there we go, 
will permanently store and authenticate property titles on the XRP ledger, their blockchain. This will help eliminate bureaucracy and hopefully make land distribution more equal. Ripple Labs and Pierce's Technologies told Decrypt. Uh, and right here, apparently there's been years of strife and mistrust. And they said that land is everything in Colombia. Uh, this is what led to groups like that starting problems with the government. I'm pretty sure I can't say a lot of those words. Here's the certificado right there. Oh, you wonderful, amazing. They said, the point is that land is important in Colombia. So a system is needed that ensures land cannot be wrongfully taken. Putting the information into a public blockchain that cannot be changed or altered will help. Once again, Ripple has partnered with an entire country to put land certificates or land deeds, if you own the land, onto their blockchain. If you don't see the significance of a cryptocurrency company partnering with an entire country to potentially be putting land deeds on the XRP ledger forever, I can't really help you out there. Things like this keep happening. There's actually a ton of Ripple news all the time. And thank you to the writers of these articles for no longer having Ripple's doing great. Ripple has tons of partnerships, but I can't believe that they're still getting partnerships regardless of what the SEC is doing. So I don't know if you've ever looked at a map. If you look at the US of A and then look north, south, east, and west, there's actual other land that exists outside of this one place. And I, and I say that as a joke and not as a joke because so many people for months were like, for those of you who missed it, uh, Ripple has multiple <laughs> partnerships with Dubai and the UAE, like really strong banking partnerships, sending money around the world, explicitly using XRP, in case you missed that. Like they're actually using XRP to send money around the world. And all these articles were like, well, what does the SEC think about this? Well, the SEC is not in the UAE, so no one actually cares. That's the Ripple has partnered with Colombia. Like, actually, think of that news. And yeah, congratulations to them. I'm glad they took my advice years ago and just started doing stuff around the world because Ripple, I mean, they were adamant to stay in the U.S. All they had to do was get kicked in the face 15 times by the SEC and, you know, Look at them flourishing. That's the Ripple News. <laughs> Moving along. Also in, this is still weird news. The world's largest crypto exchange, Binance, has announced it is all set to issue what they're calling the Binance Account Bound, or BAB. They are going to be the first ever sole bound tokens, or SBTs, to be built on the Binance Smart Chain. Yes, soul-bound tokens. Just what we need in 2022. BAB will be introduced as a pilot project initially and will only be accessible through the Binance mobile app. It will be an opt-in feature that will enable only those Binance users in compliance with Know Your Customer to mint their Binance account-bound tokens directly on their wallets when using the platform, BAB is essentially introduced to function as an online identification for Binance. It can also be leveraged by third-party protocols to confirm BAB tokens for a myriad of activities, such as avoiding bots, airdropping NFTs, and a decentralized autonomous organization using it for quadratic voting. The idea is, and this was first introduced, or the idea of it was, at least publicly, came from Vitalik Buterin a couple of months ago who was talking about soul-bound tokens. The idea basically being you have a token and it identifies you no matter where you are on the internet. This is for the idea of a, whatchamajaggers, of like a Web3, everything is Web3 in the future. Um, and instead of having to type in a password or identify yourself or saying who you are, all these other things you would simply have the token in your wallet or show the token. I'm not sure what you would actually do to kind of identify yourself wherever you need to be. Does this need to be a thing? Probably not. Will people use it? Absolutely. Especially if you give them some type of a monetary incentive. People forget the fact that you need to have, like, they need to have your ID and passport 
to be able to give you this actual token. But the moment airdrops start happening and people are making you know free money on the side from simply having given up their information, of course, this will definitely be a thing because that's how the world always ends up working. So yeah, Binance, this is why a couple of days ago when Binance started officially going up, like Binance Coin started going up, it's because they announced that they were gonna have a brand new token, the BAB, which is also going to be on top of their normal Binance chain and people loved it. I did not expect Binance's uh, coin to go up, what was it, like 15% every single day over the news of a soul-bound token. But other coins went down in the process even when they were actually being bought by, you know, mega trillion dollar institutions. That's the Binance soul-bound tokens. I don't think I want one of these. I don't think I need one of these. I'm pretty sure I was able to get airdrops before needing this so i don't think i need one of soul bound token news and yeah soul bound token what a life to be a time wait how do i always forget that i, I don't understand launch launch there we go i do hope that you've all enjoyed I do hope that you all, look at all these transactions, jeez Louise, I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be, I do hope it's wonderful. Thank you all once again for watching, liking, commenting, listening, and or supporting, and I will most certainly be talking to you all, is that a pigeon, what is that, what are these things, I, I can't, be talking. See you all soon. See you.